a lot you can do in this town. You set it up and turn it around. We might have come from somewhere else, but this is where we found ourselves. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. Guys, thank you for joining us this week, where we come to you live from Aspen, Colorado, each Tuesday afternoon, featuring inspirational locals from up and down the Roaring Fork Valley. So excited to have a first-time guest. He is the operations manager of Fitzgerald Landscaping, and he's going to tell you how your garden grows today, guys. It's Scott Rambo. Welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you for having me. It's been fun meeting you today, oh, yeah. getting to know you a little bit before the show. We definitely have some co- things in common, mm-hmm. including, Scott, summer camp. My family owned summer camps, Catholic girls camps, growing up in the great state of Wisconsin. And one of your first experiences when you moved to the Valley nine years ago was a summer camp. Were you a counselor? Or yeah, I started you... off as a counselor with Ajax Adventure Camp. Can you tell us a little bit about your Sure, sure. Uh, I had family working here in the Valley, and so I saw this opportunity to work with the summer camp. Uh, I'd been working with camps, uh, the YMCA and 4-H before that, and uh, so I ended up coming up to the Valley for for that and uh, doing management work with them, and uh, just really loved it up here. Had to stay. (laughs) And that was the Ajax summer camp? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, that's And they have a sleepaway camp, too, and they actually, uh, I believe they opened it up again this year, so now they're doing registration. You can go up to the sleepaway camp up by Rudai, too. Oh, fun. I didn't know they had that. So yeah, you spend just started. All, is it camping or like yeah. tent camping? Uh, some of it's tent camping. Uh, they had uh, cabins up there before. I'm not sure this year when they opened again what they've got. Okay. They probably do. And what were your favorite parts of that job when you were a summer camp counselor and manager? Uh, definitely going outside every day, getting to show these kids this amazing nature that's around us. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep kids' attention, but when you're outside, it really captures all of their imagination and, and you can combine a lot of lessons with the nature. Um, I love doing scary stories and rock climbing when I was out there. Ooh, scary stories by the fireplace? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or in the ghost town up at Ashcroft. Oh, I love that. I love that, that's super cool. And you're also a climber. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your passion for climbing? You like to sure. climb up by the pass? or where? Yeah, 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 Independence Pass is great. The rock up there is amazing. Uh, I started climbing when I was in college and a friend of mine taught me how to boulder. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, so there's not even a boulder in Nebraska that you could climb. And so for me, that was novel and new, and I uh, fell right into it, though I loved it. Uh, I have a little bit of natural advantage being a little taller yeah. and kind of scrawny. It's not, you know, it's not so good for certain sports, but for this, it was perfect. And uh, so, yeah, I just kept with it, and I've been doing that ever since. We have to get you into cycling, too, dude, because they're long, lean guys like ours. Not only have a good reach, but, you know, Good long legs for the bike. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could talk about a bike ride sometime. Yeah, yeah. That'd I'm sure Sean cool. would be really big into that too. <laughs> and uh, let's give your let's give your crew a shout out. You, you have some oh, uh, sure, crew sure. watching is it, is the it show. right here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for your work this summer. Uh, so far, it's been excellent, and we are pushing on with the rest of the summer. We've got a lot of new clients who are really happy with the work that you're doing. So thank you. All right. So Cat and all the crew at Fitzgerald Landscaping, and I do want to give a shout out too. To my dogs, Luna and Sammy, who are watching live on our HD channel 880 on Comcast. So shout out to Luna and Sammy. So we got those out of the way. Um, So what else? Um, What is the favorite part? Now, you are the operations manager Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Fitzgerald Landscaping, which does really high quality work. And we're going to go more into that in the main body of the show. But what are some of your favorite uh, aspects? And it sounds like the love of the outdoors. Being outside is one of them, right? With yeah. Your, with your current job? Definitely being outside is super, super good for mental health for me and for my employees. Uh, when I started doing this work, that was the main thing to me that I would come home at the end of the day. I'd gotten my exercise. Right. I'd been outside and I'd had great experiences with that. I got my vitamin D. And uh, <laughs> so then I just went home and I didn't have the same like, oh, I need to go and then go to the gym or I need, I really feel like I need to go and, uh, um, you know, take care of something else. It just felt like I was kind of able to rest at the end of the day um, satisfied like, satisfied yeah. yeah exactly and tired too which is always good because you sleep really well when you're tired it's not like i gotta go work out man because i've been sitting around all day it's like i might need to rest actually because i've been doing some physical work and exactly what's the um ratio i guess of indoor versus outdoor uh, as a manager in a landscaping company for me it's like a 75 percent in the office and then 25 percent out on the sites uh, we have to go to do site visits for our estimating. We want to check and see um, 
what kind of sun is this location getting? Is there a stream next to it that's going to water it and have extra water? Do we need to add certain zones? So for any of that sort of work, we got to go and check the properties. And then consistently with our properties that have maintenance contracts, we go back and we check up on the property. We make sure if we just installed plants there, are they all doing well? Um, if they're not doing well, why is that? Is it because they get too much water, not enough water? Maybe they're on the edge and they're not getting it. Okay. And then we make little fine, fine tune adjustments until the property is all growing and uh, it can just grow on its own. Do you ever put on your swimming suit and just jump into a water feature and go like that? Like, oh yeah, quality control guys. Um, can someone grab me a beer? <laughs> that, does anything like that ever happen or no? We have big Maybe waiters. Don't... You can oh, put you on the big waiters. Put the big waiters and, when you uh, go into the water feature. Oh yeah, those are great. And then you can move the rocks around in the water feature, make it look natural and perfect and everything, and you don't have to get too wet for it. There Otherwise, I think we'd spend a few hours in there. It'd be, it'd be a lot for the swim trunks. <laughs> well, we got so much to get to, Scott, and um, including again tips for your own gardens and your own lawns, guys, how to make them look better than ever especially with the change in climate. And we'll get into some mm -hmm. of those things too. Uh, but I do want to thank our summer underwriters who have been so generous to put on this series. June, July, August, and September. We'll go through the month of September, guys, with the local show. And we'll take a little break and we'll be back for our winter series in November. I want to thank Aspen Square, Haiti Children, Klug Properties, Silver Peak Grill, Pickin County Solid Waste Center, Susie's Consignment Aspen, Sundog Athletics, near and dear to my heart, and the Wheeler Opera House, our presenting sponsor. We'll go to our only break of the show, guys. It's just two minutes. We'll be back with Scott Rambo. How does your garden grow? Don't go away. Susie's Consignment in Aspen at 600 East Main. Same friendly faces, same great prices, and new items daily. See you at Susie's. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Join the string beans in helping reduce food waste in our community. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. Ask for smaller portions in restaurants. Take home leftovers to eat later. Donate unopened food to our food bank. Let's work in concert to reduce food waste. Providing exceptional service for over 50 years, Aspen Square features studio and larger condominiums for nightly rental with an ideal downtown Aspen location. They offer fully equipped kitchens, wood-burning fireplaces, and private balconies with full hotel-style services and gracious hospitality. Aspen Square is proud to support The Local Show. Chef owned and operated and supported by a hardworking team behind the line, Silver Peak Grill is passionate about their food, service, and delivering quality. Expect quick serve, casual dining, in a clean, bright atmosphere with an outdoor patio with shade in the summer. Sundog Athletics, Aspen's Adventure Sports School, is your opportunity to experience Aspen's most amazing adventure locations and gain new skills to increase your safety, performance, and enjoyment while mountain biking, road biking, hiking, and paddling on Aspen's exclusive canoeing adventure. Welcome to the local show. People you work with, people you know. Thanks for sticking with us here on The Local Show. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host, guys. This week we've got Scott Rambo from Fitzgerald Landscaping. Talking a little bit about your background, Scott, and the love of summer camp and summer sports and... Um, all, Gotta kinds be outside. Of, all kinds of good stuff and now working outside in the landscaping industry and um, Fitzgerald Landscaping does some really beautiful work and as I uh, delved into the portfolio I was really impressed by some of the uh, gardens and lawns and water features and 
super beautiful. Um, can you talk about some of the elements, uh, including kind of high elevation desert gardens and uh, rolling uh, blooms and some of the things that you like to focus on? And yeah, for sure. So, uh, so when we're setting up a garden in Aspen, we have a lot of limitations. Uh, it is kind of a high desert, we're high altitude, so there's a limitation on how many plants will grow at this altitude. Right. And then it's very dry, so we're limited on how many plants can grow in that. Uh, grow in that. Right. Um, we have the advantage that we're in the valley here, which has a perfect like rain tunnel, so everything here gets a nice amount of rain. And so a lot of the plants that are native, like uh, aster or delphinium, those flowers we can put in and we don't worry so much about those, they're going to get watered just from the natural environment. Right. Um, beyond that, we are it, that automatically limits the plants we can choose and then we can pick, okay, so what blooms at the beginning of the season? What blooms at the very end? What can we get in between? What different colors can we get in between? And as we work, if I'm working with a budget, um, I'll start off with, you know, beginning of the season, end of the season, fill a little in between. And let's say we do that project, we install it, we've got a water feature that's a waterfall that runs down the middle, and the next year they want another project. I can go look back at my notes and say, okay, well we had here, 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 and here, and we can add in now some of the middle ground plants that would also bloom in the seasons where they don't have as much, that would maybe add more uh, color of a different color that they don't have, and that's a lot of the way that we do it. A lot of it is by color schemes, right? Mm -hmm. And how much, I mean, does it vary in the direction that I would imagine different homeowners give you like full, you know, like full range of creativity and others are pretty specific? How, how would you describe that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. is it so, some of, people are like no yellow and you're like, okay, perfect. Okay, no, easy. Yellow. <laughs> no yellow. We just don't do any yellow in this and we'll have a note on the client file and that's super easy. Uh, other clients are like, we want uh, drought tolerant. And I know that uh, purple petaled flowers are more drought tolerant than other flowers. Okay. So if you're picking between it, even just two colors of the same type of flower, the purple one's going to be a little bit more drought tolerant than the other colors that you're looking at. Okay. So for that sort of environment, we would pick those. We would recommend that. Um, certain environments, if it's too shady, uh, there's only certain flowers that will even grow there at all. And so that makes it really easy. We're like, okay, well, it's going to be um, you know, woodruff and uh, purple nettle. Those would be the only ones that grow in the shade here or underneath okay. this pine tree. Okay. And uh, we can put that in there so we know that that's going to do well. We try to find plants that are going to thrive in this environment because some of them will live, but they won't, because the uh, season is so short, yeah. they have to have enough time to really grow to get a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. If right. they're not making it to that size before the season's over, then they just kind of stay the same size. And you probably see a lot of plants <laughs> like this at a lot of properties that never quite make it. Um, and we like those plants, you know, those are good. We gotta be really careful to take care of that one because if you break off a, a branch or a little uh, stem, then it's not gonna necessarily grow back as well. Um, but we'd, we like to fill in around it then or give a recommendation for other plants that would thrive in that area. Okay, now climate change we're seeing, you know, effects most recently in Maui, um, Southern California this past week. And how is that affecting, um, you know, landscaping work, you know, especially with water issues, um, hotter days, you know, things like that. Maybe not as um, um, amplified here in the mountains, um, but it's it's still happening. You know, we had Lake Christine fire yeah. in what, 20, 2018. That's like five years ago. I mean, it's so. I mean, some of this stuff is very real. I mean, how do you guys respond to that in terms of your work? Yeah, it's very close to home for sure. With the uh, um, fires down valley, you know, we had personal experience uh, when we're outside during the day. There's smoke in the air, and we have to be careful with that. Um, for fire mitigation, we're making sure that we're cutting back on the properties, making sure that that's not going to be something that comes close to the home. Right. Um, for climate change too, we have a lot of. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to grow anything that you plant in this valley right away because it's going to have intense heat on it. And so with the really high temperatures, especially with trees, now we've had to spray the tops of the trees more to keep the leaves on the trees if it's a new planting. Okay. And uh, that's been more this year with the temperature. What do you spray Just water. With? Oh, okay. Just okay. hit the water with some uh, okay. on the top of the tree so that the leaves don't dry out too much. Okay. And we've had great success with that. So, you know, kind of navigating our way around some of the changes that are happening uh, I still feel really, really lucky to be here in this valley because you know, everywhere else is getting it, I feel like, way worse than we are. We have some yeah. of the best temperatures in the whole um, state, for sure, and, and in the country, really. In the country, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah. 70s today is like people are dreaming about that in most parts of the country. Yep. And we're getting a little rain, which is good, too. Yeah, yeah. And in bursts, it's perfect for the plants, too. That's what they like. Uh, and this season has been like a wetter season than we've had, so it makes it a lot easier to take care of everything because it's got a little help. 
What happens when we get these like deluges? I mean, you must be a little nervous, right? Like what that what that's doing to a garden? Is it just beating down on these plants? Um, yeah, we have some, we have some new plantings too. A lot of the dirt around here is really thick clay, and so if you have a, a new tree, for example, and you plant it in the thick clay and you don't have any drainage on that tree, it's likely to just fill up the basin there and kind of flood your tree. Okay. You're going to start to see the tree die off from the bottom up if okay. it's too much water. If it's not enough, you'll see it die from the top down. So that can be a good indicator of what you're looking for, or what you need if you're having issues with a tree in the area. Um, and so we have to dig uh, extra ditches, uh, drainage for those trees to make sure that they don't get flooded. Uh, in other spots, the extra water is great. The uh, perennial wildflowers just love it and they've been just going crazy. Uh, to have this kind of water throughout the season too means that the blooms are just coming up um, as they please instead of one big rain that happens and then everything comes and then everything's gone. Right. You have these like rolling blooms more uh, throughout the season. Okay. What about pests? We've got our fair share. I mean, we love deer. I love cute little voles. Uh, aphids, maybe not as cute. Uh, I mean, these are pests though for the garden. Like, how do you guys like manage that? Uh, the voles, you're just trying to keep them away from the house. You're not really going to get rid of all the voles, so you do your best with Release that. Release the cats? No. If you have cats, that's <laughs> yeah, great. If yeah. you've got dogs, if there are bears, you know, or something like that, the dogs are the best to keep the bears away, but they don't bother <laughs> the plants. They'll eat your dandelions, which is great because everybody, you know, wants the bear to eat their dandelions. <laughs> um, uh, the aphids we have on, on lupine and trees sometimes. We work often with uh, um, aspen arborist or save a tree now that uh, they do a lot of work on the trees to help with the aphid control and any of that business. And uh, we spray the plants as we need so that hopefully the next season when they come back they're not going to have the same issue. And I've seen a lot of success in a lot of different areas with that where we've sprayed for aphids on lupine for example. And it, it really, when you spray it really hurts the plant. So you, you think like, oh no, I'm going to be be damaging my plant but it's a perennial so when it comes back the next year okay. uh, you've just gotten rid of the aphids in that area at least and so it's a little better a little easier on your plants and how do you uh, what kind of solution do you like to use like, like neem oil okay neem yeah is a good okay. spray for aphids for sure okay. would you recommend people do that like with their own gardens yeah if you see aphids on your own uh, lupine is a really really common one because they're yeah. a natural plant that grows here uh, in the valley and so if you see your leaves starting to uh, have a powdery mildew on it, that's a good reason to go for a neem oil. Okay. Um, or if you see little aphids, they'll be crawling up the stem right at the top of the, uh, of the uh, plant there. And so you'll be able to see them actually. And then if you spray okay. them, it's like an immediate result. It's like they're like, yeah, they, they go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like they had just had too much to drink and a bad college experience. That was <laughs> yeah. ending up, uh, but totally dead, and they're gone. Yeah, not just uh, not just passing out and hungover. Yeah. They're gone. They're gone. Thankfully. So, what are some other tips for people like um, for the I deer? You want to cage your uh, trees. So, if you have okay. a few like feature trees right next to your driveway, uh, the deer are going to shed the velvet from their antlers and the elk uh, too, yeah. and they'll rub right against your tree. Whatever okay. one's the closest and the easiest for them. So usually your feature tree. Okay. And uh, so what you can do is you can put a cage around it, just a metal cage, and then they can't do that. Uh, in the winter season, they'll go find another tree and they'll rub against that tree. Okay. And that'll protect your trees. If they ever get all the way around the tree, it's going to kill it. So uh, especially a tree that's already damaged, you want to pay special care to that to make sure that you're protecting that too. Uh, and then you want to plant plants that, in addition to having these rolling blooms, surviving at this altitude and surviving at this uh, desert, that they will also not be eaten by the deer because they're not too tasty. Some of the right. plants are very tasty and the deer love them. Uh, hostas are very tasty. They grow really well in the shade. And uh, if you're close to, if they're close to your house, the deer won't bother them because they won't come that close. Right. But if you put it way off on the edge of your property, they're going to be there at the salad bar every day. So it sounds like if you have like multitude of issues or concerns or maybe lack of knowledge, that might be the time to hire a landscaping company. For like sure. What would be some advice along those lines? Like, hey, you know, they're recent arrivals to the area or, you know, they just upgraded from a condo to a, a small house or whatever down valley or whatever the case may be. Yeah. What are some of those determining factors, you know, to hire a landscaping company? Sure. So uh, a lot of times our first call comes because there's an irrigation issue. OK. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, people will start to notice right away that, oh, my plants are dying. They're uh, getting dried out in this area. And that's a great time to call because the longer that you let that last, your perennials are start to go. You're not going to have them come back if they do die off that way. Right. Um, and from there, we would go in, we would see, okay, these are the dry areas. We can adjust the irrigation here. We can see that it's hitting out here. And then we can see, okay, it's hitting here in your garden, but there's no plants there. 
or it's hitting over here and you have uh, a lot of water, um, but there's no plants over there either, maybe we'd suggest this plant or this plant. You already okay. have these ones, so we'll get the rolling blooms. You already have these colors, so we'll get the colors that you don't have. And uh, that's a really very, very common way to start a project with a client and then end up with a maintenance contract so that we're taking care of that irrigation every week, so that we're taking care of that uh, property. And especially for properties where people want to sell their property, you're going to want to have the details. You're, you're going to want to have uh, the edging done on the grass before you have people come and see your house because that's the best that they'll see it. That's a, a big part of how they view the environment that that house is in, which is a lot of why they're coming here because it's a beautiful place. And um, yeah. that, that curb appeal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And right. you're getting good value then too. Yeah, I mean, it really is added value. So I mean, if you're here for an investment, you know, which a lot of people are, and yeah, of course they love to spend time. Mm -hmm. And I like to say the Aspen investment is different than a stock or a bond. You can really have fun with your investment that's guaranteed to increase in the years ahead because it's always increased. Real estate's a really solid investment, mm -hmm. but that's a great way to add value, right? Mm -hmm. To have a beautiful outdoor kind of landscaping. Yeah, they say that every dollar you put into landscaping here goes into $2 back. You're gonna double your okay. money on, on the home that you're selling. So it's not only beautifying and enjoyment of that property, it's also a huge return on investment there, a great ROI, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, uh, how does how do people get a hold of you guys? Like, say they want um, to learn more about your services. What's the, what's the best way to sure. kind of learn more? So uh, you can come to our website, uh, Fitzgerald Landscaping, and uh, we have a bunch of photos on there, a bunch of different jobs that we've done. If you want, you should give us a call. Uh, give us a call, and uh, we'll send you some information about it. We can send you a pamphlet, or or come to your place and check it out. We're happy to do house calls to see what you need and to give recommendations too. Maybe. Uh, Maybe you call this in because you need irrigation, but we can see, hey, there's aphids on the trees over here. That, that's the reason that you've got these leaves on the ground. Right. Would you like us to hook you up with Aspen Save a Tree? And they can come out and look at that for you. That right. Kind of thing. If you guys can't help them with the services, you can definitely refer. Mm -hmm. So they got the full comprehensive approach mm -hmm. and the yeah. enjoyment. What are some tips just for like gardening, general gardening tips? Because we have so many gardeners and amateur gardeners like myself around Aspen. And whether it's a little condo garden or you're out at the community garden, and you're kind of like, why don't my tomatoes look as good as hers? Like, or whatever. <laughs> like, are there some general gardening tips that could help anyone? Sure, yeah. Um, when you plant the plants, break up the roots. Uh, you want to make, make sure they're broken up because then they're ready to grow out. And uh, that gives them the best rooting before the winter sets in so that they can come back the next season. Okay. Um, you want to make sure that your roots are slightly above the ground, at least at the top, so that they have a chance oh. to dry out. Because if they soak all the way through, then the plant's not going to be happy with that either. Too okay. much water, just as much as too little water, can cause it to wilt and have problems. Um, when we plant them, we do a little bit of fertilizer, but you don't need too much because you want it to root in and really get out into the soil. And uh, it's a good idea, a really good idea here, especially to amend your soil before you would plant, to okay. put in something that's a little bit less uh, dense some of the soil here is really hard, and so right. some of the plants won't even really root into it. Your plant will kind of just create its own um, root-bound uh, uh, system there, where it okay. doesn't really get into the soil. So, And that's usually with like compost mm -hmm. or? Yeah, compost, topsoil. Uh, sometimes okay. we do a mix. Compost usually mixes in if we have soil, but the soil needs to be enriched to be a little bit more nutrient-full okay. uh, or nutrient-heavy. And then uh, the topsoil is great if you already have um, pretty well cleared out area and the dirt there is pretty unusable, it's like really, really hard or something like that, uh, maybe you don't want to amend it by mixing it with compost. You can just put the topsoil in and that's great for the plants. Okay, what about lawn? Like, I mean, we see a lot of lawn issues. We see a lot of like dandelions in our lawns. And I, and I love dandelions myself. Uh, but what, what are some general like lawn care tips that could help any kind of average sure. Joe? So one thing that's interesting is that lawns don't necessarily do super well at this altitude. Right. So it's a very common thing to see it at just about every house. Um, but especially when shade comes in, uh, the lawns uh, can struggle with that. So sometimes it's a good solution to think about, uh, maybe I would want a shade garden here instead of a lawn. Um, okay. When we're doing the lawns, we keep the grass a little taller than we would in another uh, zone, in another area, because okay. it dries out. You want to make sure that it doesn't get to the point where it's dried out. Um, and as long as you do that, you can keep it nice and even. You can make it look really, really great out there, and uh, it will grow well in this area. But if you cut it too far down, if you have like the right. the golf course uh, <laughs> golf course cut, the right. buzz cut there, 
it's, it's going to be hard, especially if we have one of these, you know, 90 some degree days, it's going to really roast your lawn. And we just had a, like one of our driest Julys ever in Aspen, at least up in this area. Yeah. Like, how do you know how much watering is enough? You know, watering both the lawn and the garden, is it just every day, no matter what? Or is it see what the rain's doing and react off that? Or how do you like to do your watering? So some of the systems actually do react to the rain. If it's going to be a rainy day, it will adjust and lower the amount of water usage for that day automatically through the system. Oh, we work with a ton of different watering systems. So it's more about having the irrigation team that has experience. We try to keep employees uh, as long as we can. If we need to pay them a little more so that they can stay in the valley and really work with us year after year, yeah. we know that that's the value our clients are looking for is somebody with that experience. So right. we gotta pursue that. And uh, with our irrigation team, it's the same. We got guys coming back so that they already know your zones. If they go to your house, be like, oh, there's not enough water in this area. Oh, well, that was zone six. Adjust zone six, turn it up five more minutes for the timer, or okay. uh, maybe if it's too much water but the plant's still dry, maybe we're watering it too much at once, maybe split it to two different times. Water it a little then, a little later, and then you have a better dry out time and your plant does better. How else, I mean, that's a huge point. The consistency, um, the uh, quality, is from return employees, right? Bringing them back every year. And besides paying them a little bit more, what are some other ways you like to kind of show appreciation? Because that's what's really the gold now, right? Yeah, for People sure. People are the gold, you know, that's the best part of the business. Yeah. So how do you guys ensure that kind of that continuity? So we have a, I, I like our, our work environment. I feel like we're really open. If people want to talk with us, we can always be there and we can talk with them. Uh, we do a breakfast every Thursday ah. where we bring in breakfast in the morning and we rotate to different things. We're always supporting really? different local places that are making the breakfast. And uh, I feel like that works really well because the crew loves it. And it, it just, it's a good motivator to come in the morning and already be full and ready. Know that you're getting this provided for you. You don't need to worry about breakfast that morning. And uh, for us, we work uh, typically four day weeks for 10 hours each day. Sweet. So Thursday I could like be that. your last day and coming in in the morning, all right, I got breakfast, I got 10 more hours, that's it, it's the end of the week. A lot of people can come in and really work hard for that last period of time. I like that. Can you tell me where the breakfast is this Thursday? I'm gonna There's, show up. As, in at Aspen, in at Aspen. <laughs> as the new inside guy at Fitzgerald Landscaping. I'm gonna really do some quality control on can, the breakfast aspect. <laughs> can shout out to Francesca's Empanadas. Right. Uh, really good stuff. <laughs> So where is your where is your favorite breakfast spot so far Ooh, for like, the uh, morning breakfast? It's got to be Louis Swiss. Oh, uh, the it. breakfast burritos from Louis Swiss are my favorites for sure. They I just I love that they do the egg in the full tortilla size and they roll it all up. It's delicious. And I love the three day weekend too um, to work off that that big breakfast on Thursday. <laughs> um, the three day weekend. I mean, people must just love that, right? Yeah, that's a great concept. I think. If it rains a whole ton on a day, then we could come in on a Friday because maybe we missed the whole day of service for somebody. Yeah. And again, when we're working with this high end, this level, we don't want any clients that are going to be like, oh, well, we didn't get the service this week and we had guests or we had a party. So Right, yeah. right. Man, this has been really interesting. I learned a lot. I'm definitely going to apply some of these things to my little lawn and my little garden where I live. Nice. Did you have fun on the show today? Yeah, it was excellent. Thank it you. It's great to have you on and, and learn so much. And Fitzgerald Landscaping mm -hmm. for more. And what's your website? Uh, FitzgeraldLandscaping.com. Easy enough. Scott, I baked you some cookies as a small token Thank of my appreciation. You. Oh my gosh, I heard legends of these cookies. Well, you let me know and be a part of my quality control team if you would. All right, I'll share it with my crew and then you know they can help too. We'll get their input. <laughs> thank you so much, Scott Rambo. And thank you guys for watching this week on The Local Show. At the Wheeler Opera House, we set the stage for connections that create memories for our audiences, artists, and greater Aspen community. At the Wheeler Opera House, all are welcome. You're welcome to be a part of history. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. Want to live like a local? Help us reduce food waste, a major contributor to climate change. You can help in three simple ways. Plan menus carefully and only buy what you need. Collect unused scraps for compost. 
Buy ugly fruits and vegetables. Reduce food waste. Live like a local. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience Aspen's most amazing adventure locations and gain new skills to increase your safety, performance, and enjoyment while mountain biking, road biking, hiking, and paddling on Aspen's exclusive canoeing adventure. Welcome to the 